All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We've got ourselves dark in the top right side of the map, representing Talon Esports and looking like a beast. In the ESL Asia Finals, he's up against Gummy Bro. For those who don't know, Gummy Bro, Gummy Ho, one of the most creative Terrans out there, has decided, I'm going to proxy racks, mate. I am opening up with a double... Wait, wait, wait. Was this double 13 racks? Oh, my God. He built two racks on 13 and then built an SCV. Is that normal? I, I feel like Maru used to do double 15 racks. This is so early. So he's going for a super committed marine two racks. But wait, 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 wait. Oh, because Dark's going to go gasless three hatch on this map. Oh, but he's going to scout it. Okay, so so basically Gumiho knows Dark likes to go gasless three hatchery on, on this sort of map where he can be really greedy. So he's trying to count on that and count on him not self not getting scouted. But the Overlord sees it. Gumiho doesn't know he's being scouted. Keep the Overlord back. Oh, Dark shows the Overlord. Why does he show the Overlord? Okay, he wants to confirm if it's two or three racks. So he doesn't mind giving away the information that he knows about it. I always think it's a little bit like it's nice to keep the Overlord back. But uh, but yeah, double 13 racks is incredibly fast Marines. The problem is, I mean, what are you going to do? Push up this ramp? He's going to build a bunker on the low ground. I guess he can get straight into the main mineral line. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you think about it, it's it's not about denying the hatchery. It's about killing your workers. He's going to have to build spines. He's building a bunker on the high ground as well. Oh, man. Okay, drone's getting pulled. Gumiho's trying to bait him just to waste mining time. There's no way the bunker on the high ground finishes, but can he waste enough of the mining time? The Marines can get inside that bunker. If they tuck themselves in the corner, they can get in. They can get in. Bunker on the high ground gets canceled. Oh, the Marines get inside. The SCV on the high ground is not getting attacked. It does now finally get attacked. But look at this. Drones cutting off the reinforcements. Can they stop it? The other Marines pop out. Oh, you got to keep those Marines in the bunker, though. Otherwise, you're going to lose control of the bunker. You cannot lose ramp control here. The Zergling sneaking out. That's very good for Dark. Great moves by Dark. Mistake for Gumiho. That being said, this is very bad for Dark. Having so many drones on the outside. He does transfer to his gold minerals right now. He's building more drones. He's building more drones. Dark the Savage. No spine crawler. He's just building queen queen right now. Now he goes back to Zerglings. He's going to counter attack with six drones and a few Zerglings. <laughs> oh me, oh my. The Marines are forced to come home. He's got three Marines, a few SCVs on a contain. He's thinking of mining the minerals out, but it takes four 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 workers to, to mine through that. There's no way you're going to get through that unless you want to drop a mule which will mine it out in one go. He's going to try and mine the door open with these drones, but the Marines do get back. That's actually a very cool idea. I didn't even think about that. If your drones get stuck on the outside, you can use them to mine your opponent's door open. But uh, he's just going to come back inside. Does get rid of the Overlord. Command Center is going down. Gumiho with a massive commitment to this proxy ranks, but he's finding large amounts of damage. And uh, back on the front, looks like maybe a Zergling or something ran down that ramp and did die. Drone does check that he's not getting his door mined open. Uh, no gas mining for Dark. You might be wondering why not. The reason is he's saying, look, I got all these drones trapped outside. My economy sucks. If I go on gas, my mineral income is absolutely garbage. Oh, he's going to mine open the door himself. And that's out of vision. Oh, sneaky boy. He's like, let me through. Let me through. Let it through. Oh, <laughs> does lose one drone. Nice focus fire for Gubio. Dude, that I've been, I've been watching videos about like old, um, like the Hundred Years' War history in, in, in um, you know, France, France and England, like the 1400s and stuff. And, and that just reminded me so much of like all the different sieges where they're trying to like sneak supplies into the cities and stuff. He's like, they're like quickly, quickly sneak past the lines, try to get in there. But now Gumiho says, hey, I can use that door as well. I'm going to get right up in there. Slow Zergling suck. Slow Zergling suck. Queens are very hard to deal with though. That queen, she's got energy. Nice transfuse. A few more Zerglings coming out would be big. One Queen goes down. The Marine firepower is so high. Good Queen Micro on the left, though. The drones have to be pulled. You don't want to lose any of those. There we go. Great hold. Great hold there. It always looks like it's getting bad. And then Dark reminds us that he's a wizard of defensive Zerg Micro. He does not go down easily. And he will always be able to stabilize under pressure. Two Marines still building at a time. The factory only now goes down. That being said, you are being kept on two base. And, and you did just force a lot of Zerglings. So the trades are still positive for Gumiho. He's still got a forward position. The problem is more Lings have snuck out. They're going to be annoying. They're going to force something home. Ling speed's now started. Dark is still stuck on two, but if he can find room to start a third base, that would be nice. If I was Dark, I think I'd actually take the, the left base because both of them are kind of exposed and you, you really don't want that to get cancelled and he can't really secure it. Yeah, yeah. Great minds think alike. What can I say, guys? The guy who I make fun of not knowing how to do a build order or build overlords, I just called him a great mind because he chose to do the same thing that I do. People say I hate Dark. They say, Pig, I think you have a problem with Dark. You always... I, I honestly am trying to be as as 
as much as there's always a bias when I commentate to my understanding of what what's best and what's the right thing to do or optimal in a situation, that comes through, right? But I actually do think Dark is a goddamn genius. I do think there's there's holes in this game, holes which I think a, a coach would really help him with. You know, I think if he could if he could have like Serral just be his coach for like a week and really grind out build order openings. I, I think Dark would be unstoppable because I think Dark just... I don't know if there's anyone who has as much clutch as Dark. If we had to go by clutch ratings, like Maru's better at turtling to late game. Maru has maybe some slightly crisper cheese openings, but I don't know if anyone's as clutch at making comebacks as Dark. This man knows how to win, unfortunately. Oh god, the Marines find it. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Dude, losing this third is so bad right now. He's building a fourth on the right side, but that's going to have to be a cancel. That's expensive. And if those Marines get home, that's frustrating. So he's building Zergens right now, trying to do it. Gumiho is going mech. Double upgrade mech. Cyclones, blue flame. Dude, this is sick. Uh, honestly, if I was Gumiho, I think I'd hide these Marines up here in the corner of the map. Because you know he's going to try and catch you on the way home. Gumiho. Okay, he, he sees the lings. Yeah, you just hide in that corner. Don't even keep moving, man. I, I feel like, oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to get behind the gas. The lings are going to trap him. They're going to trap him. Oh, oh, oh. He's trying to stop the links from surrounding, but he's going to go down. Yeah, nice angling there for Dark. Well done. Does clean those Marines up. Finally punishes them. Now, you could argue they weren't the most important unit in this game anymore because he's going back, and that's true. But if you keep those Marines alive, it might be longer before he realizes you're playing mech. In this case, he now knows you're playing mech. That's going to cost you. Evo Chamber Rotorans on the way as well. I actually friggin... I mean, what, a, what an oddball opening. I, I really would not have thought Marine proxy pressure is going to be good on this map. But Gumiho's, Gumiho's made it work. Um, it doesn't mean he's winning. There's a fourth and a fifth base rebuilding. Dark had his production halted so badly by having his third delayed and then, you know, finally got it down and then it gets cancelled that he's like, well, I've got extra money, build extra hatcheries. A lot of people go, isn't that crazy going five base? Remember, Cyclone surround. Hold that thought. I'll explain that later. Cyclone's getting wrecked by Ling's nice move. Hellion's in the main though. There's nothing to stop it right now. Blue flames up. Good drone spready. Beautiful drone spready from Dark, though. Look at this. Minimizing the Hellion splash damage. He's still going to lose quite a few drones, but making it much better than it could have been. A lot of players would have panicked there. Dark stayed calm. Misfire there for Gumiho. Doesn't get quite as many as he maybe could have got a few more. 11 drones are still, still pretty good for this stage in the game, but it's not free. He throws away a lot of Hellions for it. He did lose two Cyclones behind. And uh, as I said, uh, a lot of people, they, they, they make the mistake of thinking a hatchery is the same as a Nexus or a Command Center. When a Terran or a Protoss takes a third, you go, that's a three-base Terran. That's a three-base Protoss. And there are rare all-ins where they don't build workers for those bases, and it's actually not really a full three-base build, but they're so rare. On the other hand, for a Zerg, the hatchery, it, it, it's not just a base, it's also a barracks. It's also a factory. It's also a starport. It's, it's, think of it that way. The hatchery is the center of Zerg production. What's greedy is if the Zerg builds the 90 drones to saturate all five bases. But if they just build five hatcheries, well, they could sit on 50 workers and just mass units off that. And that could just be for making more stuff. So an important distinction, I, I see even uh, masters and GMs sometimes, they, they get into the mode of just thinking Zerg's on five bases, he's being greedy. But if you don't see drones on that base, it's not necessarily the case. And you can see now Dark is starting to drone these bases up. He's also going Nidus Swarm Host. So he's got Roaches and Ravages for the frontal defense. Nidus Swarm Host, which is pretty good on this map. Um, I guess if you Nidus like Swarm Host from this side, you can definitely do some damage. Oh, oh no. Guys, I just had a, a, a psychic moment. Swarm Hosts are going to pop out here, throw their Locusts. They're going to kill both Armories six seconds before 2-2 finishes. It's, it's finishing in a minute. This prediction could be completely off since the Swarm Hosts haven't started building yet. The Cyclone scared him into building a few more Roaches. But I'm just like, I could just... This this would be such a nightmare for Gumiho with this armory placement is if Locusts come from there and get rid of these two upgrades just before they finish. This would be so, so upsetting for Gumiho fans. <laughs> Myself being one of them. I would, I would be very, very upset on Gumiho's behalf, my dude. Cyclone's coming forward with the Hellions as well. Roach is going to try to pull back there. By the way, if you're wondering why the voice is a bit different today, guys, had some beers yesterday for the first time in a while. My voice is always much deeper after uh, a night drinking. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It is it is what it is. Um, today we are uh, fueled by our sponsor of the day, Too Much Beer. Um, anyways, Hive's on the way. He is not, he's not going many swarm hosts. It's only 13. First Nidus Worm on the left side does come up. Ooh. 
Ooh, guess what? 2 is going to finish, guys. If he went for the first Swarm Host wave on the right, he still wouldn't have got in in time. He would have been just a few seconds too late. You see? 2 -two's finishing. <laughs> Damn it. My, my crystal ball's not working today, guys. I thought I was I thought I was having a little bit of precognition there. But uh, looks like no. Uh, good defense by Gumiho. He's just going to rebuild those turrets as well. Turrets are good for killing a few of the Locusts before they land and also getting them to land on low-value targets. Cyclones are also really good for denying Nidus Worm. So he denies it on that side. The bottom right is still going to get up. And he's going to go Hive. He canceled his Hydra then? Whoa, he's swapping into Ravageling Bane. Dark was going to play uh, Lurker Viper. He was going to play Lurker Viper off of this. But he's changed his mind and said, nah, let's play Ravager Ling Bane, which is like the standard anti-mech comp. And remember, Lings are fantastic against Cyclones. Cyclones do have more hit points now, but they, they don't lock on as fast. So Lings are way better at tanking against them because of the cooldown on the lock on. Here we go. Locust coming in from that right side. Run the SCVs. Yeah, this is it. Lifting orbitals and running SCVs is huge. Planetary fortresses are often actually a handicap against Swarmos because you can't lift them. So having just orbitals, if you've got the reaction speed to lift them is great. Now, obviously, on the other hand, if your opponent's attacking with just a few swarmos here and there, planetaries will shut those down. But if they come in with those big locust waves where they can actually bust a planetary, even with repair, it is better to have orbitals. So nice moves by Gumiho so far. His 3-3 is on the way. He's going to try and push forward a bit here. How many tanks have you got? Five. I, I kind of want to see some Thors mixed in. I feel like their splash damage missiles are amazing for slowing down the impact. Dude, that's a dangerous locust wave right there. That is up front and center that is he doesn't have any hellions in the mix hellbats with blue flame very good at shooting locusts but look at that notice the way dark's just sending a few locusts in at a time to make the tanks do friendly fire oh he should have moved those locusts into the mineral line no micro on them he did get the tank but if if he held position they would have actually killed a few scvs this is the trick with locust micro if you guys see there's people out there who say swarmos are so bad you watch them they never micro the locusts they let them all chase one hellion they let them all just chase a single cyclone rather than just actually go for the workers. A mixture of manually telling them to land in different areas to get the siege tanks to friendly fire. As well as, oh, nice escape. Good, good denials by Gumiho, though. He's slowing down some of these locust waves. Roach Ravager comes in. Cyclones are going to be supported by the tanks on the left side. But a lot of cyclones are going down. This is a very, very decent looking fight for Dark. That being said, Gumiho's supply is okay. It's not like he's getting his butt kicked here. He's trading better overall. Is it going to be good enough? Uh, sorry, Dark is trading much better overall because he's using Swarm Hosts, of course. Um, but is it good enough is, is what I'm trying to say there. <laughs> locusts, if the Terran maxes out on a 3-3 mech army with tons of Hellbats, the Locusts don't do much damage. Question is, what's he going to have by that point? Is he thinking Broodlords? Broodlord swap is usually very good against mech. There's no Thors in the mix, so it could be especially effective against a, a tank Cyclone heavy player. Locust coming from the north. Uh, they don't get doing that much damage. Only got a few seconds to work, but hey, gets a tank for SCVs, a turret, a refinery. Another turret does burn down. Creeps covering 90% of the map. Uh, Banelings are usually huge with swarm hosts because Banelings are very supply efficient. Remember, each swarm host is three supply, so that's 39 supply of swarm hosts that can only shoot once every 40 seconds and Often they only kill one or two units each time, which over time gives you mad value. You're ahead 2,800 resources and the units lost. However, when the Terran pushes, sometimes it's hard to just have enough army to defend, which is where Banelings really help you out. Swarm hosts are going for a direct army engagement. He's going to go. He's going for it. Dark's going for it. He's going to support the Locusts. He's going with the Ravagers as well. He spl spreads his army out. Is he? Is he going? No, he's not. He's just going to do the Locusts on their own. And he does spread across. He will take out two siege tanks. And not bad. But it's two tanks every 40 seconds. Gumiho's mining almost 4,000 minerals a minute. He can replace two tanks every 40 seconds and still get closer and closer to maxing out. And that's where the Roach Ravager army might be falling off. The Cyclone army scary. Where are those Banelings we were talking about, guys? He doesn't have any Banelings in reserve. Huge mistake. He needs speed Banelings to hold back these exact sort of counterattacks. This is exactly what we were just talking about. He's got a few Lings on the right. They could get in and do some damage. And they will. They will. Very nice. He's going to get on top of that. Transformation servo is about to finish. That'll be quick transformation speeds. Oh my god, these Zerglings only have plus one melee against plus three armor mech. The mech is taking no damage from the Zerglings. But plus two melees on the way. Three three is going to finish for the range. He's trying to build Ultras now. Um, Ultras armor is way more effective against Cyclones these days. But in general, Ultras aren't the most elegant unit for dealing with this. If you, if you want to have something that's going to be a bit more supply efficient, I would normally want to see just like one to two Vipers. A lot of Banelings to help clear the Cyclone Hellbat. And um, 
maybe maybe Lurkers can also be quite good against Cyclone Hellbat, but like he, he can't do this with just Ultras. I think Gumio is going to have too much of a mass. So strategically, I, 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 I'm about to say Dark's making a big mistake. On the other hand, I've seen Dark get six surrounds and win games while, while he's got a you know inferior composition anyway. Is he going to do it? He's trying to come in, but the Ultras go in on the north on their own. The Cyclones are getting hammered. Oh my gosh. The tanks start to land big hits though. And yeah, that's it. As five Ultras can't beat that many units on their own. That, that fight made no sense fundamentally for the reasons that I mapped out before it started. Uh, he, he needs... He can't just go pure Ultra. Ultra Swarmost isn't a composition. Dark's making some stuff up that we've never seen be successful. Admittedly, I've never seen someone play pure Ultra Swarmost before, but I, I, I can't imagine this is ever the right thing to do. Cyclone Hellion in the top left does take out that hatchery. He starts taking down the drones there as well. Um, I don't mind some Ultras being mixed in, but he's going to need a, like at least 20, 30 supply of Banelings to get through the hell that Cyclone a bit and then bring some Lings in as well. And, and he's going to need to flank. If he could get like a Viper with a Blinding Cloud, that could be big. Either way, Ultras are going to go in. Tank on the high ground does good damage. Nice kiting with the Cyclones. Hellbat's morphing just to try and tank and buy a bit of time. You can see how little damage the Cyclones do <laughs> to these Ultras because of their plus three kite displating. Um, Cyclones are starting to fall, but Ultras are quite expensive. And remember, Cyclones are cheap. Tanks in the north getting jumped on. Dude, Dark. Dark's going to do it with just Ultras, isn't he? Why? Gumio's still building Cyclones. He's still building almost pure Cyclones. Um, They technically can out-micro the Ultras. They can definitely out-micro the Swarmos, but are they going to ever kill them? Dude, they're doing no damage. They're, 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 they're tickling. Right now, there's like 40 Cyclones tickling these Ultras. Dude. Oh, my God. Okay. The new Ultra against the new Cyclone. The, uh, the, 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 the verdict is out, guys. Uh, new Ultra does not take damage from new Cyclone. I said, I, we've never seen this. I don't think it's going to work. Dark says, mate, I've tested this out. <laughs> Kumio is obsessed with Mass Cyclone. Turns out they don't do damage to Ultras. He even burrows it to break the lock-ons. Dark, you troll. Dark's trolling right now. He's burrow microing Zerglings. Dude, as always, this is it, guys. I'm happy to be wrong. Dark proves me wrong on a daily basis, and I'm happy for it. What an absolute mad lad. <laughs> The Ultras are wrecking right now. These Cyclones do nothing. They don't do anything. Oh, no. And those 20 extra hit points, um, definitely, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't have expected more than a handful of Cyclones for hunting down Swarmos to be the right composition in the late game. But uh, I, I don't know. I thought they'd do a little better than that due to the numbers. There was a few moments where there was like 14 Cyclones locked onto an Ultra, and it was not losing hit points very quickly. Dark has just shown us if your opponent's a bit too obsessed with those Cyclones, Ultras are definitely the way to go with their 7 armor. All right, going into game two. I mean, Dark, you know what? I didn't know Ultras could do too well on their own against Mech. Turns out that new Cyclone, I was totally wrong about it. When you're that happy on Cyclones, apparently Ultras are pretty much a hard counter. I mean, that looked awesome for Dark. I, I was very impressed with that. I do imagine if there's more tanks spread across those bases, uh, and just in general, and there's like 10 to at most 15 Cyclones and the rest is Thors and tanks and some Hellbats to buffer and all that. You know, maybe some Libs as well. Obviously, they're great versus Ultras, but they weren't really part of the equation just yet. Maybe the Ultras don't do so well, but against a real Cyclone mass focus, which Gumio was, I mean, that's exactly what he was doing, was mass Cyclone. Ultras do seem to be a powerful unit. That being said, Ultras are quite far up the tech tree. There is a window if you don't make Bane links, you know, or Lurkers maybe. So something a bit more supply efficient against the Cyclone. Maybe get out some uh, some Fungal to help catch them or some Vipers to abduct them in. They can overwhelm you. And uh, Dark definitely did it well last game, but I stand by what I said. And that Ultra Swarmost is an awkward way of dealing with it. And it was the perfect puzzle for that one. But I don't want to see Dark do that two games in a row because I'm pretty sure Gumiho will know how to adapt and adjust. Gonna be a pretty standard opening here. No scout, so if it was a pool first and a few zerglings, this could be problematic. But actually, this is a gas first. Yeah, that's a that's a very fast factory, guys. So he's not gonna even have a marine. If this was a pool first, he would take so much damage because you can't afford to scout. You go straight for a reactor after the reaper, so you can get a really quick couple of aliens out. Often you look to dive with two to four aliens and find damage, and that can punish a player who goes for a late ling speed. We can see that Dark here is going for his third hatchery before ling speed. So already got the drone waiting up there. He's already pulled some workers off gas, which is why his worker, his uh, gas income, sorry, is so delayed, so slowed down because he's just like, yep, yeah, just need to get 100 
after the hatchery starts. Now, the Reaper is later than normal as well, because you've gone gas first for Gumio, so it doesn't even get a single Zergling. Sees that the hatchery is up, and Link Speed will be starting momentarily. So actually, he's going for a third Queen. Wow, third Queen before Link Speed. Impressive. Dark's droning up as well. Oh, this is kind of cool, actually. I kind of like it, because normally you get Supply Blocked on 36 naturally. I kind of like the idea of droning to 36, and then going, well, while I wait for the Overlord to pop, might as well start Link Speed. Or you're just going to go four Queen into Roaches. Okay, I think it's just a Roach opening for Dark. Because at this point, if you haven't started Link Speed, you've either forgotten about it or it's intentional. I'm going to err on the side of Dark being intentional here. And uh, assume that he is going to be going for that Roach Warren probably sometime in the next 20 seconds. Double alien production on the way as well as a Banshee for Gumiho. Now, do, do keep in mind, the third command center is delayed. And that's really quite big. Should see that Roach Warren any moment now. He does normally hide it in the back rather than walling off with it. Means you can't use it, plus say an Evo Chamber and a Queen to block Zerglings, uh, Hellions running in. On the other hand, it's a secret. With oh, the second gas already going down as well, it makes me think he wants to do something very aggressive, maybe a big Ravager Ling attack. That being said, if he was doing that, Ling Speed wouldn't have, it probably would have started, wouldn't it? It's kind of odd getting a second gas that early, but it is what it is. Hellions gonna dive in, Roaches are not out yet. Oh, this is a pretty good window. Three drones for Gumiho so far. Make it four. Eh, gets a few Zerglings, but looks like that's about it. Probably best to just get out with what he can escape with. So three Hellions for four drones is not particularly impressive. Uh, at least he can kill a few more Zerglings on the way out. I doubt he gets any of these drones. Just not enough firepower. And with Dark pulling those away, he's not going to be able to take them out. Six Roaches are building. Uh, nonetheless, losing any workers this early is uncomfortable for Dark. So... He's also had to build six more Zerglings. So, I mean, look at that, guys. You got 12 Zerglings in total being produced out of a player who's never planning to make Ling Speed. That's less lava, less minerals that could have been going towards drones. So there is indirect economic damage as well as direct economic damage. Third command center goes down. Extra gases on the natural. This is looking like it's going to be a high-tech play. Oh, the Banshee sneaks in. Dude, he forgot his spores. He forgot his spores, those Hellions, causing a nice distraction. Not to mention these Banshees came in so early. This Banshee arrived at like 4 minutes 35. That is about as fast as a Banshee can possibly come and Dark caught with his pants down. But Gumio not microing as best he could. He should be going after those drones, but he's busy at home. One extra Banshee is at home. He's building a third one. The SCVs, I think they should run. I don't... I think he's got to get out of it. He's going to try and fight. I don't know about that, man. Oh, that Ravager as well. You don't want to let that Ravager finish morphing. Hopefully he clicks the Banshee on that at some point. Roach damage is starting to fall. Meanwhile... What happened to the other Banshee on the other side of the map? I'm just going to bring up that unit's lost. It died. It died. Didn't get any more drones. That's unfortunate for Gumiho. If that Banshee was still bouncing around picking off drones, that would be great. But he had his hands full. Dark stretching Gumiho's multitasking and does find the value. That Roach on the left does go down. This Roach on the right side shouldn't be able to get another kill. And good Hellion Micro as well, keeping that one alive. Oh, actually, the Roach did one tap this other red hit point Hellion. 11 SCVs, uh, sorry, 11 drones for 12 SCVs. I, I always favor Zerg in these scenarios because they can recover their economy faster. However, where's the tech, right? Roach Speed's just started. He's going to go Spire, which is good for hunting down Banshees, but it's not great at actually fighting against uh, Cyclone Mech, which is what he's up against. Oh, Gumiho. Ah, Gumiho's slower speed as a player. You get to see it sometimes in these games against guys like Dark that make the game messy. And they force extra mistakes out of you. Meanwhile, Gumiho is struggling to keep up. But he does take out an Overlord at home. He's going to hunt down this Overlord with the Banshee there. Can't hide on a pillar. Not with the Banshee there. The Cyclones will easily take that out. Now, 1-1 one, one upgrades are coming in. But he's only on one factory. And this sucks for, for Gumiho. He desperately needs more factories. And he needs them right now. He can't go back to Bio. He's 100% committed. But it's six and a half minutes. And his second and third factory has just started. Oof. Honestly, with his factories being this late, you could actually just win the game with Mutalisks. Dark might be able to just run in and kill way too many SCVs because you're only going to have a few Cyclones and they might even be on the wrong side of the map if you don't see them coming. Dark tries to take a fourth. It gets denied temporarily. Two Banshees in the north are running around. Dark's on 61 drones and six gases. And his fourth base finally starts up. Third base starting to get filled up with workers as well. Gumiho slowly replacing his wall off. Banshees flying to the main base. And gets himself two drones. Oh, and a queen and a third drone. Not bad. Some solid damage. Where's the spire? 
Oh, it was just there. He came close. I'm pretty sure he came close with those banshees. Or at least at some point he jumped. Maybe this was just a reaper from earlier in the game, actually. Either way, the Mutalisks have been hidden. 1-1 one, one upgrade start for Zerg as the 1-1 one, one finishes for the mech. Engineering bay's on the way, so at least Gumiho will be able to build turrets when he sees these Mutalisks. But getting any warning ahead of time, that's the problem. Gumiho does have a fourth command center building, but with only two Cyclones out, unless he starts two Cyclones right now, there's just no way he can defend the Mutas. Mutas flying across the map. That being said, is it only five? Oh, okay, Dark went for a minimal Muta commitment. This might actually be really good for Gumiho. He still has no extra Cyclones building, but the Hellion Reaper does see these roaches out front in the fourth base. Two more Cyclones start up only now, seconds before the Mutalisks arrive. Oh, he's going for four Cyclones, five at a time, but the Mutalisks are going to fly into this base. The SCV is very quick reaction. Gumiho pulling the boys away from the natural, trying to buy time. Cyclones will start to chip away at these Mutalisks when they get in range, but they're not there yet. Turret goes down in the third, and the natural main base wide open. Turret goes down there as well. The SCV building it immediately targeted. The Cyclones are overhead, or underhead, I should say. One Mutalisk falls. The Muta's rotating back towards the natural turrets. Almost finished there. Banshees are going to fly in, but there is a lot of defense. And that is a Nidus Worm. That is a Nidus Worm. Are we going Nidus Swarm Host? Okay, I think he's going to go Nidus Swarm Host. Mutalisks for air control. Nidus Swarm Host to harass. Roaches and Queens to swarm elsewhere. Not a bad way to do it, man. If, if Roach, Swarm Host, Nidus is just the core of your play, and then you add some Mutas to deal with Banshees, why not? That's a good way to do it. Hurricane Engines is on the way now. Building three more Mutas is interesting, right? Because, like, I guess you want enough to actually kill the Banshees quickly. You're also droning your fourth, taking gas as dark. 1-1 one, one upgrades are almost finished. Meanwhile, 2-2 two, two has actually been hitting really quick for Gumio. He's also up to a fourth and fifth factory, and he's building reactors on both of those. So he's going to have just two tech labs and three reactors. A crazy amount of Cyclone Alien production available. This is Gumio's camera. Nidus Worm's popping on the top. He doesn't know about it. He does not know about it. He's about to find out, guys. He is about to find out. There we go. He just flew over a Nidus Worm. Cyclones are on the way. He should be able to shut this first wave down, I believe. Mutalisks come in from the left. Cyclones jump in. They do lock on and almost take out a Swarm Host as well as force a lot of these Locusts here. But good micro. Dark grabs the other Locusts, sends them south. He could kill a lot with this. Remember, Mutalisks are taking out one of his gases at his third at the same time. Looks like, yep, a depot goes down. Mutalisks are bouncing around. And the Locusts grab 13 SCVs combined with that Muta Harass. Only one Mutalisk has died this game, so no Mutas died. He got a Gas, a Depot, a few SCVs. Unitis Worm on the south. I think Dark's in control of this game. He's going to go Baneling Nest, cancels it, builds a Hydroden. What the? So he's, he's going, he's thinking about going Ravager Bane. Remember, I was saying, I think Banelings are pretty essential. Or Lurkers. He's decided Lurkers, but the thing is, is Lurkaden is not even started when his Hive's finished. So I actually think Banelings would be better if you're going to be this delayed. Oh my gosh, he built a pack of Zerglings, not realizing he doesn't have Link Speed. He's also only going ranged upgrades, no melee upgrades right now. Those Mutalisks getting cornered. Oh god, get out of there, bro. Get on out of there. It is a mass Cyclone army for Gumiho. Plus three vehicle weapons is on the way. Doesn't have the gas for plus three armor. That drone on the front, don't know what that was thinking about doing. Mining your opponent's base out, normally good. Not against Cyclone Banshee Battle Mech. Cyclone Banshee Battle Mech's too mobile. This is not a turtle mech style. Gumiho is actually the one with the more scary army when it comes to just jumping on top and killing stuff. Swarmos and Mutas are not going to help you fight in front on. And Gumiho is going for it. Gumiho is just going to shove through the guts. He's like, dude, you built Mutas and Swarmos. Neither of these are frontal fighting units. You need something crazy supply efficient to make up for that. Which, of course, he cancelled his Baneliness, so he doesn't have. He's now trying to rebuild the Baneliness. He hasn't even made a lurk again. D Dark, not going for any of the supply efficiency to make up for his weaknesses, and he is getting punished. Look at that Cyclone Ball. He just doesn't have enough roaches to fight that. Mass 2-2 Cyclone Hellbat Banshee, destroying everything in its wake. The Swarmos are starting to fall. Locusts do come out defensively, but he can just back away from that. Look how many Swarmos are going down. These Banshees are absolutely killing it. The Locusts unable to connect at all. Cyclones rotating to the right side. They're going to find a great angle on this base. Banshees getting lured, or at least luring the Mutalisks away. Another one is sitting over the Swarmos. On the right side, the Locusts land. They manage to kill a Cyclone, or almost kill one. The roaches do finish it off, but every roach goes down for like, what, two Cyclones? This is disgusting. That is a big ball of Cyclones with a double upgrade advantage, and it is a Zerg who spent way too much supply on Mutas, Queens, Swarm Hosts, and Drones, and not enough on actual fighting units. And the fighting units they had was the lowest supply efficiency unit in the game. 
the Roach, or at least one of the ones we commonly reference as being quite bad for its supply in terms of its raw stats. The supply count was Dark's enemy in this game, and he failed to make up for that with something like Speed Banes. For those who don't know, Banelings only have the same supply as a Zergling. So if you get 50 Banelings in your army, that's a massive amount of damage that especially stops your opponent jumping on you, gives you time for more Locust Waves, and it only costs you 25 supply, which is the important part. 25 supply for 50 Banelings is truly insane. He's now going to add some Infestors with Burrow to try and hold back Gumiho. To be fair, if Gumiho didn't shove through the middle, I think it would have been fine. Because Dark would have just kept harassing with the Swarmo, slowly lost his Mutalisks, but, you know, they at least stopped the Banshees from harassing, and then he could do some good stuff. He ambushes in the grass, but see, he doesn't have enough damage. Even with an ambush, the Roaches, Gumiho just does not care. He's like, I'll just A-move this, dude. I don't need to get fancy. You can pick off some units if you want. I am going to shove through this north of the map. Nice Fungal. Nice Fungal. The Banshees take out an Infestor, though. They will take out the second one, as well as a few Roaches. Quite a few Cyclones go down, but even more behind. Even more behind. He doesn't even care. He does not even care. Gumiho is just like, whatever, man. I've got unlimited units. Well, okay, he should care. That was actually really over eager. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is he giving this advantage up? He's basically in a game-winning position, or he was. But he throws his army away. The fungal comes in clutch. The locusts do help him stabilize. Unfortunately for Dark, he is stuck on 58 workers. He does have 2-2 two, two Roach Hydra. Both Roach Speed, Hydra Speed, and Hydra Range all are together. Gumio has an 82 worker, 4 base economy. I mean, he's just got so much. He's got 3-2 as well, so an upgrade advantage and plus 3 vehicle plating on the way. Dark's going to start to build a few drones, but he's got a transfer. Transfer is from the, the natural. And he's, he's got to try to get back to 70 workers. If he's on 70 workers, I believe. 57, though? It feels like Gumio's going to remax pretty quickly. Now, if you look at the army supply, you might think, what are you talking about? Gumio's still way down in the army. What is that army supply, guys? A corrupted, useless, seven swarm hosts is 21 army supply. They're a harassment unit. They're not good for fighting front on. The infestors don't add any raw damage output. That's what I'm concerned about. There's, there's barely more Roach Hydra than there is Hellion uh, Cyclone Banshee. And you do want to try and at least have even numbers, if not more. Locusts come in and do deny, but look at this. Scans do find most of these swarm hosts. I do like the idea of like borrowing your swarm hosts in a giant spread. And just every now and then throwing Locus in from all these different scenarios. And at least this is buying a lot of time for Dark. But Dark looks all in on the Roach Hydra. His army is still looking very small. He's got a Roach Hydra Infestor Force in the south. Nice fungal on the Banshees. But he's losing his Infestors. This is just not enough to fight this. This part of his army gets jumped on. Remember, being the aggressor works against traditional mech. This is not trad mech. This is modern battle mech. Cyclone, Hellion, Banshee. It's hypermobile. And it's the Terran who picks where and when to fight. You, as the Roach Hydra player, are actually playing the less mobile composition. Unless you're playing Ling Bane, you cannot outrun this. And that is exactly what Gumiho punished there. He said, oh, you're going to split your army? Cool. I'll just give up one of my bases, a few workers, jump on the other half. And, I mean, he is getting pushed in here and losing his tank, losing a lot of units. But I don't see his push ever getting stopped. Not by the dregs of Roach Hydra that are popping out. Dark's trying to rally back, but he honestly should have rallied back miles ago. Like, like a, a minute ago. He should have been rallied into his natural much earlier. And he just doesn't have the numbers to contest. Too far behind the economy for too long. There was a tank shelling on the remaining Roach Hydra. Cyclones and aliens rallying out onto the map. And Gumiho is going to tie up the series one to one. All right. Dark gets caught, gets caught out there. The supply inefficient Roaches and Swarm Host unable to stop that savage push from Gumiho. Great decisiveness from Gumiho. But uh, we have seen Gumiho is very focused on this kind of mass cyclone pushing style. And... I think there is that, that I mean, we, we talked about the issue in game one, which is swarm hosts can't shoot that frequently, so they're not very good for their supply cost when push comes to shove. So you need other things to kind of make up for that. So you need need something to synergize well, which is why we always say banelings. Rogue originally was the old hydraling bane swarm host guy against mech in 2017. Kind of stopped Gumiho from being dominant. Gumiho would have been an absolute god tier player for many years, I would say, if it wasn't for... Uh, the fact that Rogue showed everyone how to beat mech with swarm hosts and banelings combined, because those banelings pushing into them on creep very difficult. You can you can slow push banelings very efficiently, but uh, pushing them very fast is hard. Now this is a <laughs> what is this? He just changed his mind. There was no reason for that extractor trick. He just changed his mind and decided, you know what? Gas is for idiots. Let's freaking hatchery pool into a third hatch. Dark loves this gasless build, and it can be very good. I wonder, 
I can't imagine Dark is going to push his queen to the outside at all, to be fair. I mean, this is a third hatchery, so it's not as important as this one. Um, this is the build where about 340, he builds a couple gases and a roach horn and starts a roach transition. No link speed, nothing like that. Gumio is doing a one racks expand, a very uh, kind of standard looking one racks expand. Barracks gas build this time. I mean, I wouldn't mind a bio play for Gumiho. He, he, one of his strengths is he mixes it in. And on this map especially, you can, you know, pick up here and then go back across the gap or go around and, and push to the front. It, it's it's generally considered a pretty terrible map for Zerg Dynasty, right? It's a uh, winner, winner, Terran dinner or Protoss dinner. Because a, a free gold base for both sides, that's great. But Terran can harass yours much easier than you can harass his. And while you can go for Roach Ravager and you can, you know, deny mining, that's a big investment the other side of the map. Against a guy who likes to build Cyclones and Banshees in surprising numbers, running across the map with Roaches is very dangerous. Thanks, Double Dub, for the subby sub. So you see this Reaper gets here earlier than the Gas First Reaper. He does almost lose it. Gumio's Micro a little bit too aggressive and he will have to back away. He gets himself a Zergling though. 25 minerals of value. It matters. It does make a difference. The other six minerals is from the Extractor Cancel, for those who don't know. You said 25! No, Zerglings do not cost 31 minerals. They cost 25. Cancelling a 25 mineral Extractor gets you 75% of the original cost back. 19 minerals back, 6 down the drain. Reaper's going to be annoying. As we pointed out, Reaper can be a real D-bag back here. And the Queen struggles to defend. But it's only a small bit of mining. And he actually goes Roachhorn 310. You do need gases at the same time. So it's a bit earlier than normal, I think, because he is expecting to, to deal with some, obviously, Hellions and whatnot and wants to try to secure that third mineral line. You can run a drone around and build a spine on the other side. I've seen some people do that. That's a cute little thing. You guys know I love I love shoving the queen through the gap. There's not actually a gap, but you can you can build an Evo and tunnel her through. You don't have to do it with an Evo. My Twitch chat is, has told me apparently I did it with just a drone, two drones on hold position one time, but I couldn't replicate it. I only only managed to do that once. Two drones do go down. Denied mining as well. It's not the end of the world for Dark. I mean he's he's got plenty of space to mine on his other bases. He's gonna start building roaches though. And it is Bio. Ah, Gumio. Third command center on location as well. Already finished, dude. The greed. The greed knows no bounds. And, and it shouldn't know any bounds. Double eBay after that. Dark can't be aggressive off this. The problem is, even with these roaches, I mean, I guess he could move out and deny and, and hold the, the reverse side of the mineral line. But he's not got link speed to cover him. Roaches do come forward. He's got some good creep spread. 43 drones against 34. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I guess I guess you just macro up and take this fourth on the left and just be prepared to run these drones away. I think that's the best plan for Dark, is just don't get too stubborn about defending that gold mineral line. I think that's the, the trap that everyone falls into on this map, is, is if they take the gold, they think they need to hang on to the gold, which is the wrong call. Now, the Roaches are going to try and pressure the gold of Gumiho. He doesn't have many Marines or Stim yet. Yeah, this is actually a really good move. Really good move. He's going to deny all the SCVs. They're just going to go and mine from the other base. So he's had a little bit of his mining denied, but now he's denying a bunch of Gumiho's mining. Once Gumiho has Stim and like 12 Marines though, he can just Stim out here with the Hellions and Marines and kill all these Roaches. So for Dark, this is like, a, oh, this is good value for now, but like he, he should have a timer in his head going, mm, in about like at the latest six minutes, I need to get out of here. Yeah. It's funny that Gumiho actually did it from the inside of the mineral line there. Alien Reaper kill a roach and then they run across the map. That Reaper will, will you know, defend itself. A single roach behind the mineral line is going to be like, haha, the four, re four aliens and a Reaper can beat a single roach, guys. They, they absolutely can. Not that they're going to bother stopping to fight it. They're just going to focus down a few drones. Going to focus down the weak alien. Nice move for Dark. Doesn't quite kill it. He's still denying the gold minerals. gumio has got to get out here, man. He he's got to move out to deal with it. I think he might be worried about Ling surrounding him or something. Catches a drone on the front. Oh, wow. Dark's really going to commit to defending this area. I really thought he'd expand to the top and give it up, but he's saying, no, no, I've got Roach Ravager, very solid army, I can do it, 1-1 one, one starts, Roach Speed starts, 62 drones, Dark's doing well, Dark's doing well, he's denied so much mining on the gold minerals, this has really cost Gumiho, Gumiho's saying, screw this, I gotta do some damage, his medevacs are so late though, is he going 8 racks? No, 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 that's 5, so he's on 5 racks, armory, he's going for extra gases on this base, he's still not mining these gold minerals, Gumiho's falling behind, he needs to do damage, Hellion Reaper runs in, nice stack of those drones, he gets 3 kills, might get a few more. Five drones ain't half bad. But here we go. Bio's going to stim it on the gold. No, he doesn't even stim. Look at that. Just grabs a few overlords because he knows Dark's good enough to react. 
does. There's another Overlord here as well. Oh, leaving so many Overlord, three, four Overlords in the open. Oh, Dark, what are we doing, mate? Ah, I like that though. Single Roach Boy still being a bit of a D bag. Gonna take out multiple SCVs. These Marines are like, oi, stop, mate. Get out of here. They will take the Roach down. Just stem a second time though. Now that the medevacs are down here, it looks like he caught another overlord. That is four overlords. Not bad value. Dark's only on 59 workers. He's going to go infestation pit and tech up into melee and link speed. As well as burrow. But uh, it's awkward right now. This is Oh, the drop across is so annoying. Oh, he even picked up a, a, hip, a unit that was taking a bit of damage. Oh, the roaches from behind the minerals are actually fighting okay. But if you can just shuffle... Yeah, that's, that's it. Once you get out of range of those units... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this drop is doing so much damage right now. Dark counterattacks. He runs in and starts doing damage, but Gumio can just run away and lose mining time. Oh my lord, that is a lot of damage. 14 workers. A ton of stuff goes down. And like I said, this is why you have to be prepared to just give up the gold base and expand to the top of the map because this area is so awkward to defend from drops. It's so awkward. It, it, even here, you need to like break these rocks and get creep all the way out here. It's just, it, it's a position which defending it comes with some rewards, but I feel like it has to be a flexible defense. You can't overcommit to it. Now, to be fair, Gumio's gold mining has been wrecked this game. He's finally just going to siege a tank and be like, that's it. I'm done with this. This is where you see Dark run three Ravages up and buy all the tank and then run away. <laughs> two Infestors are on the way. Oh, he's going 2-2 two, two range. Okay, so Dark, it felt like was going to go up to Hive. But I think because he took all that damage, he's now like, uh, I'm in survival mode. Just make infestors, make roaches, try to slowly recover. He's realizing he can't really afford a Zergling, Baneling into ultra transition. So he's kind of stuck in his very basic level. Another roach tries to sneak in, unable to get there. Two twos on the way, uh, well ahead of time for Gumiho. His fourth command center is going to build on location. He's going to expand in the same sort of pattern. But of course, you can move this tank down here. You can, as the Terran with the longer range and also the more mobile army with the medevacs, you have a range advantage and a mobility advantage with the medevac bio. You can definitely take advantage of that. Neuroparasites on the way. Dark is thinking about how can I make a comeback? I took a lot of damage before. What's a cheeky play? Fungal would be great on these Marines, to be fair. In the north, looks like uh, drones do take out a Marine there. Biles not landing. Where are these infestors, man? He's got to bring these infestors to the front. If he could land a sneaky fungal on these marines, that'd be massive. But it looks like he's just waiting for the, the kind of ambush maneuver. Like one big fungal in that ball of marines could be big. Oh, I don't think this is a good fight though. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Unless he, oh my God. Oh, Gumiho, Gumiho, watch out for the fungal, bro. Oh my God. All oh, the infestors up front, not a great fungal. Great, great Biles though. Does take out two medevacs, but loses an infestor already. He's only got two more, man. He does not have a lot. And he's only got one of them on the control group. The other one never got a control group, which is why he hasn't brought it to the front. Huge fungal does land. Gets a medevac with the Biles. Is that going to be enough though? Gumiho with 2-2 two, two against 1-1 one, one right now, pushing his upgrade advantage. The Biles are fantastic across the line, but Gumiho is dodging against them. His tank is not part of this fight. He's convinced that the upgrade advantage is enough to do this, and he might be right. It is nail-bitingly close. That fungal whiffs. Dark with some not great fungals this game, guys. Remember, fungals got an extra range. It's back from 9 to 10 range, which is way easier to land the fungals than it was last patch. But uh, Gumiho's pressure seems to be very, very powerful. That tank in the back, another one on the high ground starting to move forward. He's really just leaning into Dark right now, and Dark is down on workers for such a long time. Roaches try to do a run by, but the tank gets some big shots on those, so they're already heavily wounded. This fourth, fifth base of Dark is in jeopardy. He's going to already pull his drones away to the north. He's still trying to skirmish. He's got 2-2 finish now, so it is even upgrades. Roaches burrow in the north. Nice move by Dark to preserve whatever units he can. He's down 10 workers, though, and that's a fourth base for Gumi. Roaches try to move forward. The tank is still sieged. Great defense for Gumiho. And Gumiho's going to deny the gold minerals in the south as well. Okay, so with 3-3 coming in, he's also got 8 racks. When did he get 8 racks up? Wow, okay. Doesn't have add-ons for them, so he's just massing units. So it is a very committed single factory 8 racks push here for Gumiho. You can see why Gumiho was so committed. Because he, he was a, he was like, oh, I, I know I can commit because I've got so many units. Not only did I do a lot of damage to you, but I'm building eight ranks, not even waiting for add-ons. Just getting as many Marines and Marauders out as I can. He knew he had the upgrade advantage as well. So you combine the fact that you've got eight racks production and those upgrades, it makes a big difference. The minerals do mine out. Files take out the tank and the Ravages are going to ruin his mineral line. Definitely should not be fighting with SCVs here. Bit of an iffy decision there for Gumiho. Apparently his SCVs don't run away from a fight.
Nice scan there goes down. Now, there was still an infestor. It looks like he's found all of his infestors now. I do feel like there was an infestor just chilling in the back for a while for Dark. Oh! Ah, great reaction by Gumiho. You know, the, the, these reactions, the infestors are never quite catching him from the surprise angle with, like, the Omega Fungal that you're looking for. They're all good fungals, but they're good when he's so outnumbered that he can't really capitalize, right? And, and that's where things are going kind of rough for Dark, because he just doesn't quite have enough going for himself. Roachling counterattack is a good move. There is triple tech lab up. Plus three armor is going to finish as well. So Gumiho's got his 3-3. Three, three, double upgrade advantage again. Caduceus reactor. The medevac energy upgrade is here. Biles completely with. And a fourth base gets denied yet again. Dude, Dark just doesn't have the numbers to hang on. He's trying to use fungal bile to survive as best he can. Counterattack of Roachling will take out the eight racks. But can he stop this gigantic advance of bio? Big fungals. Remember, they only do 25 damage a pop. The medevacs are slowly healing through that. Eight racks goes down. SCVs are starting to fall as well. Another big fungal bile combo. Dark is hanging on like a champ right now. But he's out of fungals. He has used up his green energy wad. And that's all he's got. The Roaches are going to counterattack, but Gumiho's main will survive. Meanwhile, Dark's main base surviving is a long shot because he's got tanks encroaching on his territory. The, the tanks there, one tank will get piled down. How many Ravages are going to lose for that, though? He takes out one tank. The second one only gets two piles on it. This tank's sieging in his face right now. He will pile another tank, but he's going to lose all of his Ravages. And with no Ravages, no Fungals left, his own Roaches on the other side being absolutely stalled out. 38 workers apiece, but the Terran has double the army supply, a double upgrade advantage, and everything going his way. Another attempt for a road run by in the north, gets cleaned up by Marines, and Dark has to tap out. Gumio swapping to Bio on the very Terran favored map. I think that was a very wise decision to mix things up. All right, going straight into game four. Dark in the top left now, down one game, but he's on Oceanborn, a map which, whilst it was one of the Terran maps in the previous map pool, I don't think Zerg, Zerg's got really used to this map and they, they found a lot of success on it problem this third base is the only third base you do not want to take this third base so what i'd like to see from gumiho here is some sort of blocking play which he's not going to do because he's playing command center first so never mind uh, I, I was saying like either an ebay or just send an scv and block it a little bit and then let your reaper help block the base because delaying the third can really mess up uh, a zerg's build order but gumiho is going to go cc first now command center first Oh, is he going to do CC first mech? I kind of hope he does. Haven't seen that in a while. I remember he was doing like super greedy mech um, a couple of years ago. Back when, when, he, when he first came back from the military, he, he was pioneering super greedy mech. Whereas mech had always been very aggressive openings before your third command. And it was always like, let's lean into the harassment and the pressure like he did on site Delta with Hellion dives and early banshees and all that good stuff now he is still going for a tech opening because he's going double gas after barracks right so he's not going two barracks or three barracks which a lot of people will do after command center first so it's going to be okay you know what a bit more economy tech's delayed 20 seconds 25 seconds but we're still going to be going into that quick factory Thanks for the comment there from Smartem. Enjoying your old month old videos on Stormgate. Watching them for about a week. Very interesting. I never played any RTSs. No worries. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing more videos next time they go into, into their next uh, phase and stuff. And same thing with uh, a lot of the upcoming RTSs. I've got my eye on. Kind of keen to just do bits of content for all of them and kind of study all these RTSs that are being kind of developed over time and see see what happens. See what sort of little fun esports quirks. Especially games in their early days are so fascinating because no one knows what they're doing and like from day to day you realize something you guys thought was really good is really bad and something that you're like oh that's that, that, that you know this thing's really bad oh no it's really good now if you just do this little adjustment it's kind of fun seeing how much there is to learn it does remind me of the early days of starcraft 2 when every day it was like a new light bulb was turning on and we were realizing these grand things about the game that we hadn't figured out before Could you explain why this map is good for Terran? I veto this because Zerg feels impossible to beat on this. Yes, I am bad. No worries. Uh, uh, basically, it's quite uh, small. Um, so you've got good kind of cliffs, sight blockers, ridge lines. Anytime you've got a lot of choke points and cliffs and ledges, that's going to favor the army with longer range, which is always Terran against Zerg because a lot of Zerg units are melee or very short range, like Roaches, only like three range. Oh, SCV goes down to the Zerg. Nice move, Dark. 
<laughs> Kumio, underestimating that, dude. He should have ran that to his main. He is, by the way, going for a very quick third command center into Starport. But just to talk about the map a little bit more, once you get to late game, the Terran can get like a planetary here and like they can split the map so easily and there's just not a lot of room to surprise the Terran. Terran can have their whole army here and it's like, it, it's covering this base, it's covering this base, even this base isn't that far out. It's just very, there's not a lot of room. As a Zerg, you want to pull Terran apart in the late game. So in the late game on this map, Terran is very advantaged if they're like even in the late game because you just can't really out multi-prong them unless you say sneak up a Nidus or a big drop in the back of their main, which likewise very easy for them to build some turrets on the edges of the map, some sensor towers and, and see that sort of stuff coming. So that's one of the big problems. The other one is just, like I said, there's some good cliffs and ledges and just it's a decent pushing distance. It's not like, oh my god, this map's so good for Terran. It's it's not. It's 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 I would say slightly favored for Terran, but you know, that's always, there's always a context there. Like, I, I see a guy like Serral on this map. I don't, I don't think, oh, this is going to be super tough because it's Oceanborn. But uh, in general, a little bit less room to breathe. Zerg prefers a bit more space between the players and the bases themselves to be more spread out. So it's easier to pick the opponent apart. Viking takes down the Overlord. Nice move. Dark right now. Hasn't really seen what's going on other than the command center first. He's droning pretty well as he goes second gas. He did go Ling speed this game. Second and third gas. No lair yet. Let's go for a quick fourth, which I love. I'm very curious to see what Dark's going for, because we haven't really seen any sign of it. it. The fact that there's no Roach Warren or Banely Nest down... There we go. Okay, Banely Nest does go down. I was like, that's very peculiar if he doesn't commit. Looks like he wants to play Ling Bane. And... Uh... I don't think he's assuming it's mech, you know? That's that's interesting. He's kind of saying... Because if he assumes it's mech, he wants the Roach Warren up just for safety in case Blue Flame Hellions come in. But as it is very defensive for Gumio, Gumio's got his second and third factory. His 1-1 is already so far completed. And expect a double Evo Chamber to go down any moment now for Dark. Ah, there we go. Double Evo just before 5.30. Ling tries to get in, unable to scout. We've got our first Banshee coming forward. But it is just a safety Banshee, no cloak. But look, he's forced Spork Rollers, guys. Three Spork Rollers go down. Banshee backs off. Oh, Tradmech! It's Tradmech, ladies and gentlemen! Oh my god. Gumiho is bringing back a build from old days. He's going to go double Thor into double Medivac. It is a double Thor drop harass. And if you open with this, you know what Gumiho is going to do. Napalm drops, boys. That's right. You can all hear this song from Apocalypse now, can't you? You can all hear it as the helicopter's flying. He's going to be he's going to be trying to drop some bloody napalm, man. He's going to be going for hellbat drops on top of the Zerg army when the fighting happens. Um, the medevacs can also heal the hellbats, which makes them a little bit tankier. But dropping hellbats on top of Zerg can do massive damage. Because hellbats' whole problem is they shoot a sick cone of damage. And they do pretty decent raw damage, even when they're not hitting light units. But they just so they have to waddle into combat and they all die before they actually get to shoot usually. But if you drop them right on top of your opponent when they're clumped, that can be huge. Now, he's going to start here with a... He might even go Hellbats with this. Is he going to morph Hellbats with the Thors? 4GG style? He might. Oh, he is. He's going 4GG style. Uh, there's nine queens and a bunch of Zerglings. Oh my god, he's got no roaches. He's got no roaches! Oh god, queens cannot deal with Thors. Um, Banelings can clear the Hellbats. Gumio just needs to spread. If he just spreads his Hellbats out a lot... They will not take much damage here. Oh, man. Those Hellbats aren't very spread. Um, oh, my God. The Queens are going down, though. He's got 15 Roaches building. Most of the Hellbats are gone, but there's still a few left. Roaches are popping out and dying right now. You need Roaches against this. Dude, don't tell me this just kills him. There's no way. No, Dark can't die to this. It's Dark. Dark Dark is made of stern and stuff. Drones are getting pulled into the fight as well. Oh, my God. The Roaches are dying. These Thors are doing so much damage. Dude, we didn't even get to see the Napalm drops. He's literally just done a Thor Hellbat timing, and he's doing an immense amount of damage. Now, to be fair, his Medivac flies into the Spore, which means these Thors are on a one-way trip. Ah, you really want to save the Thors, but dude, he's killed every queen. He killed so much stuff. If he saved this Thor with the Medivac, that would have been brilliant. But dude, he's still killing units with his 1-1 one -one upgrades. What the hell? 1,500 resource loss advantage, and Dark says, well, that was bad. I'm going to go for an all-in. Or is, he, or is he just going to make Swarm Host now? It might be for Swarm Host. 72 drones. It's not like his economy is bad. He can recover from this. He's got plus one melee, plus one range. I think he's just going to play Roach Swarm Host again. 
Now, there's a Raven on the way to help him clear creep. I love that addition. He's also got the um, Hurricane Engines upgrade for the Cyclones. Uh, fourth Command Center is almost finished. He's, he's still very Thor reliant. Um, Hellions do run into some Roachy boys. Very nice Roach sandwich. A couple of tasty Hellions do go down. Fourth and fifth factory are on the way. It's going to be an, another round of swarm hosts against mech. But yeah, man, crazy damage on that. That Thor timing. Catching Dark with his pants down. You don't see that one very commonly, guys. A couple years ago, 4GG was pulling that out every single game on the, the NA ladder every day. And it was like surprisingly hard to stop, you know? You got you to gotta really commit to a lot of units to shut down that. Not used to mech players shoving so viciously, but well done. Swarmos are coming forward. He's only got a few there, though, so it's not exactly the most frightening initial wave. SCV's transferring into this. My gosh. Easy there, mate. Ling Roach down on that side. Locusts are going to come in and start doing big damage already. A few workers do go down. Nice hold position on those Locusts on the right side. And he's actually killing a lot. Oh, my gosh. Went back to mine a bit early. Seven SCVs go down. Command Center is being blocked on that right side as the Nidus Worm does, of course, spread creep. Nidus on the left as well. Ling Roach gathering. Dark's numbers are a bit low, though. Dark still needs to be cautious. Like, he's acting like a scary boy right now, but he's actually the boy who should be scared. When it comes to army versus army clash, his army is much worse. Oh, he's going to run in anyway, though. I, I mean, I like I like the posturing. As long as he doesn't actually commit to a fight. Oh, God, so much damage. Another 11 workers go down? He's already killed. Only 12 SCVs in total. Oh, oh, was it? Did it just stack the numbers from both waves? Maybe it did. Might have just stacked the numbers from both waves together since there wasn't much of a gap between it. Roachling on the left. Swarmos. More Swarmos are building. So he's going up to 11 Swarmos. He's trying to... He's got Baneling speed. Plus two melee, plus two range on the way as well. Ling Roach going for a timing attack. The Ling's getting on top of the tanks. Real nice. But the 2-2 two, two upgrades. Oh my god. The plus two vehicle plating. The tanks are actually tanky. Tanks are normally pretty fragile despite their namesake. But those tanks refused to die. That did nothing. Dark's throwing the kitchen sink at Gumiho right now. But he needs to make Banelings and swap to a defensive stance. He, he can't keep just throwing things at Gumiho like that. That was that was not a good trade for him. Gumiho's got a big scary push coming now. He spent all of his money. He needs Banelings. Like I said, guys, these pushes, you need you need something in there. Banelings to help clear the Cyclone Hellion, but he doesn't have the money to even max out. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Max on, you know, you, you got to max out before you make Banelings, right? Supply efficiency doesn't matter if you're not even maxed out. So he's going tons of Ravages first, and Gumiho just pulls back. He says, nah, 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 nah. Just made you dump all your gas into Ravages. That's not really a super long-term unit. Like, they're useful, but that's a ton of gas. That is over a thousand gas invested in these Ravages, and you really want to find damage soon or you're in trouble. Floating Barracks, nicely on the south side. A few Roaches coming in for a run by as well. Cyclone does get caught in the north. We've got another Locust Wave coming in. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Locust coming forward. Thor, tank, hell that with a good, good setup. Good setup, and oh my god, the Locusts! They're gonna dive on top! Okay. You know what? Doesn't even get a single Thor. Not bad. 2-2 two, two upgrades are pretty nice. There is 2-2 two, two, uh, melee range for the Zerg. So no armor for the Zerg. Ultra Cavern's on the way. He's saying Ultras did really well in game one. He's making a ton of Cyclones again. Let's do it again. I stand by what I said. If there's like a bunch of tanks and Thors behind the Cyclones, they'll do fine because they can kind of kite the Ultras. But that's, that's, that's a big if. We saw that he's so Cyclone focused. He's only got five tanks and four Thors. But yeah, these Ultras could do amazingly well. Problem, he doesn't have armor. Armor upgrades are part of why his Ultras did so well last time. This time he doesn't have those armor upgrades, which is going to be three extra damage per Cyclone tip, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you got like 15 Cyclones locked onto an Ultra, that is a massive difference maker. Ling's being made as well as Adrenal Glands. Dark is just getting... His, his map control is not finding any value. Two more commands in his building. Gumiho's going to start progressing to the next stage of the game. I do wonder if he's going to add Ghosts, because I really feel Ghosts on top of Mech is like the, the cherry on top of the cake. The thing is, there's no Ultras, there's no Broods, and there's no Spellcasters. So Dark's not building any of the units that kind of force Terran to need Ghosts. As I say that, a Viper does start up, but only one. I feel like, yeah, a couple Vipers could be could be big, but he's going to need more than that. A Spire comes down as well. And honestly, I, I feel like in this game, Gumio is just going to build more factories and just, like, not stop. Starports! Oh, he's going to do the Battle Cruiser swap. This is Gumiho's worst tech switch, I would argue, off of his uh, his traditional mech is the Battle Cruiser switch. It could work, though, because he's going to have such an upgrade advantage and, and Dark's income is kind of bad at 71 drones. But, but remember the game versus Serral. 
in Jönköping in Sweden, uh, early early middle of last year. Um, he was kind of wrecking Serral with a Hellbat drop traditional neck army, a and then he swapped to battle cruisers and kind of threw his advantage away. In that game, I think Serral had decent air upgrades though. Remember, in this game, no air upgrades. He's already got plus three plating, plus one ship weapons halfway done. Spy is not even finished for Dark. Cyclone's getting jumped on. Oh my gosh. Oh, big Biles. anti armor missile goes down. Dark does back off. But that was a pretty good engage, I think, for, for Dark. Not bad at all. Big push on the north. Oh, Gumiho's going for it. Gumiho's shoving. Gumiho is shoving the north side while having a Cyclone army on the south at the same time. Swarmo's going to throw those Locusts on top. Hellbats trying to clump to guard the units. Notice how quickly the Hellbats get rid of those Locusts. Is that going to be enough? The rest of the Cyclone Hellion comes down as well. Gumiho's the one with a massive, massive army here now. The Raven coming forward. You might be wondering, why does he scan? I think that was just to see a bit more in front of his army. He wants to see where Dark's army is. Dark is going for a counterattack, but only with a few Zerglings, not with a big force. Dark loses a base. His Lings come in. Hellbats are just going to roast and toast all of those Zerglings. A couple of Zerglings in the mineral line being ignored. Gumiho's units are very stupid. For those who don't know, Terran units don't have to go to school to sign up to the military. And they, even though they're, I'm pretty sure Gumiho was like, my units were right here. Why didn't they deal with it? He's not noticing it. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Eight SCVs do go down. Nice scan. Does defend the southern fifth base. Ooh, Blinding Cloud plus an Abduct gets a couple of Thors. Uh-oh, Dark's got Spellcasters. That's when you know you're in trouble. Oh, sorry. Spell... No, no, he's got two. Yeah, two Vipers, man. He's got two Vipers. You're going to need to make a transition. It looks like four battle cruisers as well as plus two ship weapons starting is the play. It's, it's a surprise move. It's a good game-winning surprise. It's not a long-term move necessarily unless you really slow the game down to a grinding halt. But I think Gumiho's going to teleport them in or fly those battle cruisers in and look for immediate significant damage. That being said, dude, his mech army on the ground is already massive. Dark has a big bank, but his supply, he's butting up against his supply. He's got so many roaches in his army, which they're okay, but they just don't scale that amazingly well. Corrosive Bile does take out a Hellback, keeps Gumi Hope back for now. Gumiho's Banshee. Is this the one Banshee from the early game? No, no, he's actually been building a few more. He's also making hyperflight rotors and plus two ship weapons in case he wants to swap into Banshees after the first battle cruisers. So Gumio is playing a sort of fluid mech style with many different pieces to the puzzle. He's got a Raven, he's got Thors, tanks, Hellbats. Unfortunately, we're not seeing those napalm drops that I was expecting. I would have loved to see that in this match, but without uh, any Hydras to jump on, I think he's kind of like, eh, it's okay on Roaches and Ravages, but it's best if you can land those on top of Hydralisks. Cyclone in the north getting jumped on by the Roaches. The Cyclones catch a few of the Roaches, are going to do some nice damage. Cyclones in the south, finding the Swarm Host. There's only eight Swarm Hosts left, and another one very close to biting the dust. Survives with just a few hit points. Dark's income is, is, is just getting shrunken. To be fair, Gumio's income isn't that great either. I'm not sure why that is. Single Zergling down here being a nuisance. Siege tanks will deal with that. Swarm Hosts are borrowed on the front. Gumio is still posturing on that front side, takes out the southern hatch. Could scan to clear the creep and definitely could take out this bottom hatchery here as the bad, the first battle cruisers are here. They're ready to, to bruise some cattle. They are ready to fly through and ruin Dark. Dark does start building corruptors, realizing what's up. But remember, it's going to be 2 3 BCs versus 0 0 corruptors. 0 0 corruptors will not cut it, man. I mean, they're the best unit he can build against it, but he needs to start making upgrades. Plus one air weapons only now starts. Battle cruisers clean up these swarm hosts that are being a nuisance. I love the chaos of Dark. Nidus worms, swarm hosts, burrowing everywhere. But it doesn't feel like he's got an answer to the actual army. And, and even with a little bit more money in the bank, it's only a little bit in a game where he's been trading 3,000 resources lost more. Despite opening swarm hosts. Tells you things are not going well for the Zerg player. Viper, Corruptor, Ravager, Ling, Bane hanging out. He's thinking of jumping on this northern army. He's going to have to send his Corruptors to the south. Biles will keep the Cyclones back, but he's losing a few units every time there's a skirmish like that. Battlecruisers just kill a hatchery almost instantly. Abduct does go down. That battlecruiser could teleport out. And Gumio's going to teleport the battlecruisers all to the top right. Gets the battlecruisers home scot-free. Takes out another one of Dark's hatcheries. And Dark is just running out of room to breathe. Plus three ship weapons has started as well. Those battlecruisers already doing an immense amount of damage. They're going to be doing even more soon enough. Blinding clouds all over the force. Great Biles. Dark with a lovely concave is going to cleanse that army. However... Corruptors dive on the battle cruisers. They're going to kill two BCs, but at what cost? The Cyclones enact a big tax on them. A lot of the Corruptors do go down. Honestly, surprisingly good fight for Dark. I don't know how he came out of that at all without just getting his whole army shredded. More battle cruisers on the way right now. Gumiho's decided more battle cruisers and more Cyclones is the way. If I have enough Cyclones on the ground, enough battle cruisers in the air, I think I could just take you out. But he's out of cash. 
workers transferring to the top. This base needs more workers. There's a bunch of idle workers around as well as oversaturated. I love that Gumio is taking a second now to kind of fix his mining because he does need to make sure that mining stays heavy. Dark is, is not that far behind in supply. He's slowly adding his double Spire air upgrades now. He's got plus one attack about to finish, plus one armor on the way. He'll slowly close the gap. He's got Neuroparasite and Infestors, which are amazing against battle cruisers. Does he have enough on the ground though? 14 Roaches, 10 Ravagers. It's a lot of Cyclones. Another Ravager bites the dust. It's scary trying to deal with these bloody Cyclones. Their ability to move and shoot and pick away at you from afar is frustrating to deal with. Dark needs to pull out his best stops. I love the Infester. I love the Infester edition. That's just going to give him something to worry about, isn't it? Fungal goes down. Another Fungal goes down. Yes, he's going to lose both Infestors, but at least he gets some Cyclones. Not, honestly, not as much as I think he was hoping for. Siege tanks on the front line as well, adding some real ranged oomph to that army. You know, some people say, oh, what do you mean oomph? And I say oomph because he's going to absolutely... I don't know what I was going to say there. There was nothing. There was nothing. I'm just, I'm just meandering at this point verbally because I am watching Dark get pressed into a corner. Gumio is saying, mass cyclones, let's go. Broodlords are trying to morph, but those will be prime targets for Yamato. And that's that's going to be a big issue. If the battlecruisers spot the Broodlords and he sees them, those battlecruisers are going to go straight towards those Broodlords. Those are big, juicy targets painted on their back. Yamato's... And he actually, Yamato's the Corruptors. He says, you know what? I can just kill your anti, yeah? And then you've got nothing to deal with the Battlecruisers. I thought he was going to Yamato the Broodlords and pull out. Gumio says, mate, I can just win the game. And the series wins the Asia Cup Finals. Three games of Mech, one game of Bio on Dynasty. And he looked like a real problem for Dark. Man, what time did he hit that Thor timing? Because that caught Dark completely with his pants down. I, I would... It's so rare to see this sort of thing anymore. I think it was before seven minutes, right? Let's see. Right right on seven minutes, maybe. And with one one upgrades already finished, that's kind of crazy. That's actually it actually makes this army so tanky and powerful. Yeah, he hits like right on 650, 655, he kind of forces the fight, and dude, just just not having any roaches out. Queens don't do enough damage, and you can see how much damage the Thors do. Not to mention the Hellbats do some pretty decent attacks as well. Landed Viking in the mix. Slick play. Really slick play by Gumio. What a great way to set himself up to have an advantage from start to finish. GG, well played, Gumio. He is your ESL Asia 222 champion.